Good afternoon, my name is Kristen Peterson. Thank you for that intro. And I am the Senior Director of Business Development and Workforce Inclusion at the ARC San Francisco. Um, the ARC is a nonprofit organization that supports adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities here in the Bay Area um, to reach their individual goals on a path and at a pace of their choice. And we do that in a variety of different ways, but today I wanted to talk specifically about workforce inclusion and following that wonderful panel, um, it seems to align very well. Um, it's really been a pleasure to attend the conference and learn about all the different things that are happening in the community. And at the ARC, we call that leading by succeeding. We see our work as part of a larger fabric of equity, empowerment, and ultimately the collective driver for a more inclusive future where everybody belongs. So what does that look like? And how is the ARC and how are our partners maximizing, let's see, huh, there we go, uh, maximizing our potential? My team and I really anchor in being person-centered and cultivating a culture of lifelong learning. And I think the speakers um, that just contributed spoke to that so beautifully. There's no time clock on this. And for most of us, our careers really develop over time. So that kind of releases some of the anxiety about do I have a job, do I have the perfect job for the perfect career that I want now? You don't need it on day one. Um, a lot of the work is exhausting. It's never really done, but we see that as very exciting. We are forging a path of partnership with our participants so that they can learn about themselves, they can aspire to what's next, what the options of what can be next is, and really putting the supports in place to help them reach those goals. And we learned as we continue to develop our programming that that path and that work really needs to start before they come to us at 22. It really needs to start while they're still in school. So we wanted to be able to bring our education and workforce programming to transition age youth while they're still at school. Um, and we had the wonderful opportunity with Department of Children, Youth, and Their Families to do that. Um, DCYF aligned with the ARC's philosophy that young people with developmental disabilities need the attention and intention of our community to reach their education and career goals. And they partnered with us to bring these resources to those students. We bring the success in learning from our adult programs, which we've been offering for over 60 years, into these transition classrooms. Career development courses are facilitated by our job developers and education navigators. We have guest speakers of current participants who are working, as well as other employer partners coming to talk about their companies. We're doing individual assessment to really drill into the interests and abilities of these students. And the fun part, it's all fun, but the really fun part is career exploration. We're taking these students out into the community where they have the opportunity to meet a variety of our employer partners and job shadow other people who are doing that job now and building careers. And I think that last part's really important because when you meet other people with disabilities that have faced the same transition, that have maybe faced some of the same barriers, and you see them living the life that they've designed, reaching the goals that they've set, it's really a beacon for what's next for you. In the past 18 months, we have partnered with four schools in San Francisco Unified School District, serving over 75 students, and we're starting our fifth cohort this month. And our goal is to be in all transition classrooms in San Francisco by the end of 2022, and we are on track to do that. We've also been able to expand this program to San Mateo, and we'll have two transition classrooms um, working with us this spring semester as well. And as we look at the new participants that will join us down the road, we also think about the hundreds of people that we're currently serving who are starting or who are growing their careers. As a natural part of entering um, the workforce, there's a lot of fear and doubt. And I see that and our team sees that as fuel. The individuals that we support may not have had an opportunity to try something out, to falter, to fail, to attempt again. 
And that's the environment that we really want to create. Opportunities to try things on with all of the risks and reward that comes with trying and the opportunity to fail. And so that's where we're really focusing on resilience. We know that the people that we support are incredibly resilient. We want to be able to be a mirror to them so that they can see their own resilience and generalize that as they're entering the workforce. We work with our participants to not only join the workforce, but to manage their health and learn new skills and grow their social network. And it's really anchored around building their resistance and building that commitment to be a lifelong learning learner, rather. We haven't always seen our work through this lens, but as our programs evolve and change, our teams and participants and our partners see this as the focus. We all have to stretch. We all have to try new things. And we all have to have a little bit of grit to get through it. We need that skill to reference back to that time that we failed and figured it out. That one failure does not define our future success. And if anything, it can propel you towards what's next for you. I think the best way to highlight our work is to talk about the individuals that we support, the people who show up every day and challenge us to rise with them to pursue their goals and their career path. There we go. Um, Gabriel is a really wonderful example of a participant who is resilient in action. Gabe had come to the ARC about four years ago after finishing high school. He was looking for a job, wasn't really sure what he wanted to do, and found a job with a tech company where he was adored. He grew, he was a really vital member of the team. Um, in 2018, he was nominated their employee of the year. And he just excelled and loved being there. But this past summer, that company was acquired by another company. And he, like many of his coworkers, was laid off. So that was a pretty significant bump in the road for Gabe. And I know that many of us have been in positions where jobs have come to an end for a reason that was completely beyond our control. It doesn't change the fact that you feel like the unknown is huge and everything feels super urgent. So Gabe came back to us asking for help around what was next. And we were there for him to be that partner as he transitioned. He didn't just want a new job. He was very clear that he had learned a lot doing what he was doing, but he wanted to grow. He wanted to try something new and move further down his career path. So he joined our Neurodiversity Workforce Immersion Internship through the Public Utility Commission here in San Francisco and is currently interning at Pinkow, which is a leading construction firm. He's been in his paid internship for about six months and has really excelled. He'll be graduating in about six weeks and is currently in talks with that team about it becoming a permanent position for him. When he started the internship and learned that he needed to be commuting to Oakland, he was nervous about that. That was not something he had ever needed to do. But he mentioned to me the other day that it's just a great time for him to catch up on his podcasts. And he really likes the work, so that's important. When he started the internship, he wasn't sure what it was going to look like. He wasn't sure that he was going to be able to do this kind of work. He had never worked within a construction or engineering firm. He really wanted to stay in the city. And we were able to work with him to look at all of the things that he had developed at his first job and how he could apply them here. And now he's very committed to moving forward with this organization. So whether it's your first job or your next step, our participants, like everyone, need that grit to move forward. And our internship program allows for you to explore new opportunities, kind of try that on, build new skill sets in a lower risk environment. Being able to earn and learn allows individuals who are both entering the workforce and those who have maybe been in an entry level position for a long time to be able to step away from an entry level position and still be earning and build all of these new skills for whatever's next in their career um, path. Our internships have really been a powerful pivot point for many of our participants. But the work doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop when they're hired either. We continually work on career development, right? Most of us have not been in the same jobs our entire life. 
And our participants, like everyone else, are going to have a career path that develops. And it's important to continue to support them in those conversations. So whether we're looking at new responsibilities in a current role, getting a promotion, or moving on to a new company with new opportunities, the ARC wants to be there kind of side by side with our participants. We have another young woman that we support um, who's been a client of the ARC for over 10 years. Her name is also Kristen. Um, she started out in a janitorial role that um, she could do, but was not interesting for her. It was not a great fit for her skill sets or interests. But she had really um, internalized this understanding that because she didn't graduate from high school and wasn't able to get a GED, this was what was available for her in the workforce. Through working with our job development team, we were able to um, present Kristen with the opportunity to intern at pg &E. And she jumped at it. She finished the internship, she was hired as a contractor, she felt like she had made it. And she had, we weren't done, but she had. Unfortunately, when her contract came to an end, there was no permanent position. Similar position a lot of contractors are in. So we were back to the drawing board. She was disappointed, but she also knew that she now had all of these marketable skills and there was definitely a lot of energy in her to find that next opportunity. And we found it at Facebook. Um, and at the time, we had 10 plus participants working at Facebook. We now have about 25. And she hit the ground running. In a very short amount of time, she became one of their highest performers. She moved down onto the peninsula to be closer to work. She was flexible and motivated and just did an incredible job. And it was really wonderful to watch. About two years in, she was promoted to be a team lead, project managing the responsibilities of 15 other staff at Facebook. She went from being a mentor to a manager. Not always the easiest transition. Her pace started moving a little faster than she was used to. Managing people, managing former peers especially, is very difficult. And she hit some bumps. And she started to forget how well she recovers when she hits a bump and how truly resilient she is. And so we were there to just be that mirror for her and help talk through it. One of the biggest parts of her coaching support was reminding her where she started. This was not the first time she had done something challenging. The anxiety and excitement of starting at Facebook and now the new opportunity to manage people and honestly, it was a new challenge for our team. It's a more complex type of support than we typically had been providing to Kristen, and that was exciting. In our focus of being lifelong learners, also recognize that now more than ever, we need those same qualities in our partners. We need to work with companies and organizations that thrive on innovation and are committed to piloting new initiatives to make the workforce as inclusive as possible. Like our participants, our partners have also challenged us in the past few years to think bigger and to challenge some of their thinking and to step in as thought partners for belonging. We see our partnerships as a long-term investment, ripples of change. It's more than one job for one person it's the many people who are impacted when that hiring manager moves on and takes that spirit of inclusion with them. When a diversity, equity, and inclusion team expands their programming. When a recruiting team reaches out and asks for training on unconscious bias. All of these things completely change the fabric of these organizations. And it's really about being open to sometimes challenging conversations about the gaps in opportunity, the arbitrary barriers that keep people with disabilities out of the candidate pool, and having intention in the way that you design your teams. We have found that our partners are really hungry for information and how they can be the best and most successful ally. Those who are comfortable with taking a turn, flipping an idea over, and recognizing that true equity and inclusion is not a competency that can be checked off, but a passion and a continued practice. Ally is a verb, and it requires action. 
We now offer all of our employer and potential employer partners gap assessments, program design that increases access for applicants and builds talent pipelines, and employee development and education to infuse allyship and inclusion with our partners from top to bottom. I wanted to talk about a few of the partners that we work with just to give you an idea, kind of the breadth of the work um, in building an inclusive workforce here in the Bay Area. About three years ago, we were reached out to by Amazon to be the Bay Area Disability Hiring Hub, operating as a staffing agency specifically for people with disabilities to gain meaningful access to employment in growing areas of rapid fulfillment, warehousing, and delivery. Amazon partnered with the ARC directly to identify what the barriers to entry were um, to augment the interview process and identify and designate openings so that their teams reflect the communities where they were doing business. At the ARC, we did everything from training to building a small warehouse in our garage so that our candidates would be able to test out the work and really get the look and feel for it, understand the sequencing, and build those competencies from day one. Amazon has put trust in our team to identify individuals who will be successful there. This flexibility serves everyone. They need high-performing, reliable talent. Our participants need the opportunity and sometimes a different entry point. Over the past three years, we've placed over 120 individuals at five locations throughout the Bay Area, and between now and July alone, are looking at placing another 40. This project really highlights where creativity and partnership can make an exponential impact in a very short amount of time. When I started at the ARC eight years ago, we were placing 20 to 30 people a year, and we're now able to place over 100 people at one employer. And Amazon is not alone. California Academy of Sciences, which could not be a more different partner with completely different talent needs, has also partnered with the ARC to build meaningful programs and talent pipelines for just their teams as well as other cultural institutions throughout the Bay. Through this partnership, Cal Academy hosts two internship programs for transition age youth and for adults. They've hired 15 individuals in a variety of roles, like guest experience, food service, mail processing, and research. And these opportunities didn't just happen. They are the result of really focused program design, a strong commitment to access and inclusion on the part of the museum, and a dedication to employee education through these types of community partnerships with the ARC to make sure that their company, that their museum, reflects the community that they live in. And what's really interesting about Cal Academy is they didn't just stop there. They didn't stop just within their own organization. They built momentum on our local partnership, and we came together to create a toolkit for cultural institutions to replicate museums for inclusion throughout California. It doesn't cost the museums anything to access this toolkit, and it really does give them a roadmap for how to bring inclusive hiring practices into their organizations. Again, leading based on our success. And finally, one of our longest standing employment partners and someone that we'll hear a little bit more from later um, is Salesforce, and they are a true leader in equity and inclusion. We have been partnering with Salesforce for over 18 years. Um, when we started partnering with them, it was a small company of 50 people. For those of you who are local, that is no longer the reality. As time went on and continued to grow, the employment opportunities at Salesforce locally continued to grow. And our participants really became part of the fabric of the company. Um, they now locally employ 25 individuals. A couple of years ago, we approached Salesforce and their workforce innovation team to see what we could do next. For a company that's growing so quickly and not only shaping corporate best practice for social responsibility, but literally shaping our city, we felt like there was more opportunity. And the feedback that we got was that Salesforce had employees in New York and Indianapolis asking why there wasn't an inclusive hiring program there. Was this something that we could replicate? Is there an ARC? in New York. 
We partnered to explore what would work in those other cities, how other markets are structured for the disability talent pool, and where there was opportunity to expand. We were incredibly honored to be tapped by Salesforce to do this in the expansion of their inclusive hiring and supplier initiatives here in the US. Programs have now been expanded to New York, Seattle, and Indianapolis, with plans to expand to additional national and international cities this year. Um, but I will let Catherine tell you more about that. Partners like Salesforce are rare and have reached beyond their own company. They are tone setters and leaders. Both their customers and their competitors are motivated and challenged by the work that we, they do, and we benefit from that. It puts the ARC in a very unique and exciting position, not only to dr drive change internally, but to be part of a company that's setting the pace for so many others. And the ARC is just one of many strategic partners that work with Salesforce, ensuring to make their dynamic teams more representative and inclusive. These three partnerships are only a few examples of the different approaches to partner and the types of programs that can be built, but are all anchored in the same philosophy of belonging. We have 150 other employer partners in the Bay Area alone who are at different parts in their inclusion path, but have all made incredible strides. So the natural question is what are we going to do next? How do we keep the momentum going? For our participants, we're really committed to digging deeper into person-centered career development and allowing that to be the core driver of our work and who we target as partners. We will continue to push those who have invited us to push them and continue to stretch ourselves to better support our participants that are really challenging our thinking around what's possible. For our partners, we continue to expand the depth and breadth of our partnerships here in the Bay Area, allowing for that success to push the boundaries not only here, but really set the tone for what the rest of the nation is doing in the corporate community. Thank you.